Good morning, y'all. <clears throat> Today, we're gonna talk about FARTs, which are farts, or what I like to call babufas. The rat article I'm reading today is from the Medical News Today, and the title is 10 Facts About Why We Fart. Starts off to say, flatulence and flatus are medical terms for what is commonly known as farting. While people do not tend to discuss farting openly, I don't know why, it is something that everyone does. In fact, according to some research, the average person passes gas 12 to 25 times per day. So the average person baboofas more than 10 times per day and almost 30 times a day. So in the comment section below right now, how many times have you baboofed? I mean, it's what, nine o'clock? You know, I've got two out so far. I know some ninjas have probably got three, like 30 out so far. And this is why I think it's, it's odd why people are so taboo about baboofing or farting or flagellants because the average person does it 12 to 25 times and I think it's something that needs to be discussed. And they're in all the cartoons, all the comedies, kids love farts. So I don't know why, you know, if you're harvesting your inner child and you're, and you're trying to play, just be free with your wind. So here's the key. It says, why do we fart? The body produces intestinal gas as a part of the process of digestion. Once this gas is inside the body, it needs to be released somehow. It is usually expelled through the anus as flatulence, flatulence, which is another word for babufa or fart, or out of the mouth as a burp. I didn't know that, y'all. That's interesting. So gas that is part of the digestive system also is released as a burp. So a burp is like a mouth babufa, a mouth flagellants. I didn't know that, that's interesting. Some intestinal gas comes from the air that people swallow when they are eating, chewing gum, drinking through a straw, or smoking. I tell you what, um, I get hiccups and I get the burps when I drink through a straw, especially when I used to drink soda. Oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide are the primary external gases found inside the body. They make up what is called exogenous air. Exogenous air. So we're like, whoa, did you just let, out, let loose an exogenous air? Intestinal gas is produced within the body when bacteria in the colon break down the food. This is called endogenous gas. What, what? Endogenous, that's, that's, that's a unique word, endogenous. Endogenous, endogenous. So it's like, <laughs> endogenous gas consists mainly of hydrogen and for some people, methane. What, what? I, those methane ones, I think are the hot and steamies. I think we're gonna find out. You know when you, when you let one loose and you pull the cover over or it's like a face melter? I think that one has more methane than hydrogen and I call those face melters. It can also contain small amounts of other gases such as hydrogen sulfide, and I think that's when you eat eggs, which makes farts smell bad. So that's the key, the hydrogen sulfide is the hot and steamies and the the face melters. You know like if you ever babufa, well actually you do babufa because we just learned that you babufa 12 to 25 times a day. So you do babufa. Have you ever babufa outside when you're just like right here and you babufa and you smell it within like two seconds? That means that had, a, that was a hydrogen sulfide face melter. If you could smell your babufa outside, you've got a lot of hydrogen sulfide up in there. However, bad smells only apply to about 1% of the gas that people expel. Interesting. Most of which is almost odor free. Interesting. That's a fact. Undigested carbohydrates are, common, are a common cause of gas, as the stomach and the small intestine cannot break these foods down. Instead, these carbohydrates move into the large intestine where bacteria begin to break them down, releasing intestinal gas in the process. Undigested carbohydrates include sugars, such as fructose, ranophorus, sorbitol, 
which some fruit and artificial sweeteners contain. Soluble fiber found in dried beans, nuts, and fruit. That makes sense. Insoluble fiber found in root vegetables, wheat bran, amongst other foods, and starches such as corn, wheat, and potatoes. According to the IFFGD, which is the International Foundation for Functional Gastrointestinal Disorders, foods that make up that make one person fart will not necessarily have the same effect on someone else. And that's so true. That's so true. I know people, you know, can eat such and such like some people can eat Brussels sprouts and not have any methane gas. But if I eat a Brussels sprouts, you know, run for the woods because I'm going to hit you with a face melter. However, some foods are known to create high levels of intestinal gas, including so I'm going to read these foods and these are basically babufa foods that I think are common that can make you babufa or FA or AKA fart. So foods rich in raffinos, raffinos, R-A-F-F-I-N-O-S-E. Humans lack the enzyme needed to digest raffinos, a complex sugar. When bacteria in the gut try to process it, they release lots of gas. Raffinus is plentiful in beans, whole grains, asparagus, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and cabbage. What, what I, those Brussels sprouts are like little lettuces, but they're little face melters. And I know because my dad used to make them, and he used to force me to eat Brussels sprouts, and I would cry and I would sit at the table because I wouldn't eat them. Those and lima beans, but watch out Brussels sprouts. Asparagus, they definitely make my pee like hi-ya stink, like really bad. But I think the number one thing on there are the, the beans. You know, beans could definitely make you boo for me um, and Brussels sprouts. Now, let's continue on. Here's some other foods. High sulfur foods and drinks. Although high sulfur foods are an essential part of a healthful diet, eating a lot of them can lead to more frequent and pungent farts. These foods include garlic, onions, and coriferous vegetables such as cauliflower, broccoli, and some drinks including wine and beer are also high in sulfur. That's when people say that they got the beer farts. You know what I'm saying? Beer farts. And Anna Babufa is spelled, in fact, you know what? I love the way you just spelled Babufa and I love the way you capitalized it. So I used to spell it with two A's, but the way you capitalized it, it looks pleasant. So from now on, Anna, thank to you, Babufa is spelled capital B, capital A, capital B, capital O, capital O, capital F, capital A, and you can put an explanation point if you'd like. Let's continue on. Foods made with sugar alcohols. Sugar alcohols provide sweetness without the calories of regular sugar. So they are often present in sugar-free processed foods. The body does not digest them completely, so they may cause gas. There's a lot going on there. Your body doesn't complete processed foods in general all the way. So that's a good reason not to eat something that comes in a package or that is super, super processed. So just eat real foods. Um, let's see. Although everyone farts, people with certain conditions may have more problems with intestinal gas than others. These conditions include lactose intolerance. About 70% of adults globally do not have enough the enzyme that helps them digest milk and milk products. For example, people with lactose intolerance, eating dairy can cause a significant discomfort, gas, bloating, and diarrhea. Check this out. That word lactose intolerant, I think it's because in general, I really don't think we're supposed to be eating cow titty milk. So they made up a word lactose intolerant. I just don't think, you know, I don't think I don't think people should be drinking cow titty milk. I think the cow should be drinking, the calf should be drinking the cow titty milk. I don't think humans should be drinking it. It's delicious. I mean, you've got dairy, cheese, yogurts. I get it. Um, but I think I think that's why 70%, that's a 70% are lactose intolerant. So that tells me if 70% of the population is alert that's like an alert being allergic to something you probably shouldn't be drinking that that's why you can do almond milk flaxseed milk there's a ton of different milks out there milks let's continue on celiac disease there are more than 200 symptoms of celiac disease including painful bloating and gas 
People with celiac disease are unable to digest gluten, so you definitely want to stay away from gluten. Um, irritable bowel syndrome, that's IBS, also known as IBS. This is a chronic condition affecting 10 to 15% of Americans. Symptoms include abdominal pain, diarrhea, constipation, and gas. Individuals who think they may have one of these conditions should see a doctor for a confirmed diagnosis. Or go to our group, Radiculously Authentic, type in uh, celiac disease, type in IBS, type in constipation, type in um, diarrhea, and you'll see thousands of posts there with thousands of comments, and then you can reach out to people that have IBS, that have diarrhea, that are gluten intolerant, that are lactose intolerant, and then you can learn from everyone else for free. Uh, let's see. Some diets can help, some diets can help people with gastrointestinal uh, conditions reduce their symptoms. Uh, one of these is known as low FODMAP diet. By following the low FODMAP diet, a person will consume fewer few foods that are fermented or that contain, I don't know that word, I don't know that word, and I don't know that word, and I don't know that word. You guys can go to the uh, article, Medical News Today. So it says, studies have found that 50 to 86% of people with IBS who follow this diet have reduction in symptoms. I think that just means eat real food. I really think that means just eat real food. Doesn't have to be raw, but real food. Nothing in a package, nothing with a label, nothing with ingredient. Because real food is an ingredient. Hi, Danita. Other facts about flagellants or AKA babufas. Although farting is not typically a conversational starter, it is with me. And by the way, I'm gonna start with this. Have you ever been so fearful when you're gonna go see your boyfriend, girlfriend, um, or on a date and you gotta watch what you eat? And it's so uncomfortable when you can't let out a babufa because you're scared that someone's gonna laugh or they're gonna be judgmental. But I've been on thousands of dates on Tinder and I've held my babufas and it gives you like tummy aches. So you have to lie, you have like, oh I have to go, you know, I'm gonna go get a glass of water and you, and you put your butt around the corner, around the hallway and you babufa and then you come back. So number one, babufa creates lies, so you have to lie, people wanna call them fibs, just because you're scared, like just babufa. And my daughter Jordan, you know, I used to criticize her, I was like, don't do that, that's rude. It's not rude. You know, burping is not rude. It's just a part of who we are. And it wants to get out of your body. If something wants to get out of your body, if you have to go poop or you have to go pee, do not hold it. Let it out as soon as you can. Be thankful that you can let go of that waste. That gas is waste. If you got a babufa, get your babufa game on, y'all. Other facts about flagellants. Although farting is not typically a conversational starter, there is plenty to learn about it. Facts about flagellants include the average person produces 0.6 to 1.8 liters of intestinal gas each day. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, estimates that methane production from livestock, essentially cow farts, makes up about 36% of methane pollution that human activity generates. I have to tell a story about this. My Uncle Steve on my dad's side in like the 80s was driving with his wife Tammy and they were driving through a farm field and they were listening to a radio station and all of a sudden they lost signal and Tammy looked at Steven's like oh what's going on you know we lost radio station and my uncle Steve turned to Tammy and said oh you didn't know and she's like what do you mean she's like oh you didn't know cow flagellants you know interrupts radio waves and she's like really you're kidding he's like no 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 seriously cow flagell flagellants cow farts you know interrupts the radio waves and so and then when they got past the far, the cow far, the radio waves come on. And so for years, like at Christmas parties and get togethers, his wife was telling that as a fact. Isn't that funny walking around? Oh, oh, like if you're driving around or the radio station, oh, oh, there must be cows around. I think that's so funny. <laughs> okay, okay. Research has found no significant difference uh, between the amount of younger and older people fart. Likewise, there is no notable difference between the sexes. So it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, right? Or male, female, whatever it is, you know, whatever your gender is, it doesn't matter. You could still fart, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't gauge how much you're gonna fart, more or less. Uh, it says, healthy individuals pass gas 
between 12 to 25 times a day. And that means right now, if it's you know 10 o'clock where you're at, that means you've baboofed five times. And there's so many people that don't admit that they boofa. And here's the thing, you really don't get how many times you baboofa when you're by yourself. Because when you're by yourself, you spread a cheek, you just let it loose, you go you know, you're, you're, you're constantly baboofing, you're letting that toxic gas out. But when you're with someone and you can't do it, it's painful. You know what I'm saying? So then you realize, oh my goodness, I got a baboofa. All right. Only 1% of the gases expelled in farts smell bad. This include, this include foul smelling gases such as hydrogen sulfide. More than 99% of gas that people pass consists of just nitrogen, oxygen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and methane. People pass more gas when they are asleep, and I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That means you're baboofing when you're sleeping way more than when you're awake. And I gotta tell you, there are some people that I know, and I'm not gonna name names, that like I've walked in and they're sleeping, and they baboofa, and they go like this. After they baboofa, they're like this, they baboofa. And I've known some people when they baboofa, they're like this. Like they like lick their, li lick their lips, they just smack their gums. So it's like a, a total release. They're like, and they like, and then they go. That's release. That's your body like taking a break, right? So I didn't know that. This is why I do these videos. So. Most of your baboofing is going on when you're night night in your dreams. Has anybody baboofed in their dreams? That's my next study. It's raining and it's um, sunlight out. That's pretty bad. Have you ever baboofed in your dream and woke up and be like, whoa, I had a dream that I was just straight up baboofing all day every day. I don't think I have, but I'm gonna research baboofing in dreams. <gasps> this is exciting, okay? The word fart comes from the old English word Fearton, which is F-E-O-R-T-A-N. Fearton, which means to break wind. Whoa! Let me read that again. The word, the word fart comes from the Old English word fearton, which, which means to break wind. Pretty rad. Soaking beans in water overnight can reduce their, their tendency to trigger farting. Big time. If you soak black beans, um, uh, what, what, um, all sorts of beans, just soak them. You could, you could soak so many beans and actually you can put a little bit of um, uh, probiotics in there too um, and you could ferment them so much better and much more digestible and that's why it's not building up that gas. Because you know that thing, beans, beans, the more you eat, the more you too. You know, especially, you know, traditional Mexican food. Um, and it's interesting, I wanna research this, this is why I love this type of stuff, is traditional Mex Mexican restaurants, I, I don't think that they soak their beans. The reed fried beans, I don't think those are soaked, you know, but I'm gonna have to find out. So sociologists who interviewed college students regarding their feelings about farting found that heterosexual women were more likely to worry that people hearing them fart would find it disgusting, while heterosexual men were the most likely to think it's funny. I've met a lot of women that think it's funny. I've met a lot of women who have baboofed in front of me, and I've met a lot of women who do not think it's funny, and I've met a lot of women. I've been in long-term relationships with women that I never even heard them baboofa, not one time. You know what I mean? But they baboofed 25 times a day. So that's interesting. I don't, I guess you just, you could just get on with your bad self with your baboofas, and if you don't want to, you can keep it super private, you know, on the DL, I guess. I used to be that way until my daughter, Jordan, my daughter thinks it's the funniest thing. And so I finally just like, all right, girl, get your baboofas on. And now I like to learn about it and talk about it. Because there's baboofa shaming, there's fart shaming. So the takeaway to this article is though, although farting is a natural, wait, takeaway is although farting is as natural as eating or breathing, it can still cause embarrassment. Even people whose level of intestinal gas is well within the normal range may try to limit how much gas they pass. That's not cool. Remember, if your body doesn't want it, it's going to expel it. Why do you think you get snot? Why do you think you have phlegm? Why do you think you have congestion? Because it wants to get it out. Why do you think you have to go to the restroom? You have to go poop, you have to go pee. It wants to get it out. Why do you think you get sores on your skin? Because it wants to get it out. So if you have to pass wind, baby, pass wind. 
Fortunately, studies have found that adjusting a person's diet can result in fewer farts. So true, whole foods y'all, plant-based, your body will get used to it, you'll have a lot less farts. Over-the-counter commercial enzyme products such as Beano can reduce the body's production of intestinal gas. Why would you wanna buy an over-the-counter product to eliminate what's supposed to come out of you? I don't get that. That's again, just making money. That's making money. Like here, buy this product, you know, for 10 bucks, and we're going to stop your, your common bodily functions so it can't release it. That makes no sense. However, these products are not usually suitable for long-time use. For a more natural approach, a person can eat smaller meals more frequently and drink peppermint tea to relieve bloating and uh, flagellants. That's pretty rad, peppermint tea. So, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Hello, Anna. Hello, Michelle. Pretty pleased with the cherry on top. Share this video. Um, you know, if you like these videos, um, if you gained anything out of them, if you learned them, share them in groups. Make sure you comment, tag your friends, and um, go outside and play, y'all. Thank you for joining me. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Because I want to stand with you on a mountain. And I want to be with you in the sea. Keep it raw. Stay rad. I love you all. Bye-bye.